Hello everyone, I hope you've had a good week. We're already at week four of our virtual Sunday school. Um, we have a great story for this week. We don't all know how to do everything, do we? Um, does everybody know how to be a heart surgeon? Uh, anybody know how to be an auto mechanic? Or um, anybody right now know how to be a calculus teacher? Uh, of course not. So there's a lot of things that we are good at, like I'm a great cook. Um, I can do some sewing and quilting, uh, but there's also things that I'm not very good at. And today I'm out here in my garage because one of the things that I don't really know how to know much about is mechanics. Like if something goes wrong with my car, I do not know how to take care of that. You could give me the manual that the mechanics use and that is not going to be very helpful for me. I'm not going to be able to figure out how to fix the car if it's broken down. So if you think through things like that, um, who are people that you turn to when you need to know something? So maybe if you're working on your homework and you get stuck, uh, hopefully you could ask uh, your mom or your dad, right? You would see if they could help you. If you are uh, hurt or sick, a doctor would be the person that you would uh, check in with and to see what's going on. Um, again, if your car is broken down, you take it to an auto shop or somewhere where they can they can fix it for you. So we have to find the experts or the people that can help us out when we need them because we don't know everything ourselves. In our Bible story today, there's a man who doesn't understand what he's reading. He's reading from the Bible and he doesn't know what he's reading and he gets help from someone uh, who can explain the scriptures to him. So our Bible story today is about Philip, who's one of Jesus' disciples and a man from Ethiopia. Um, so that story comes from Acts chapter eight. So. Let's see here. If you have this Bible, the My Very First Holy Bible, it's page 1,633. 1,633 is where you find it in that Bible. If you have the Action Bible, it is page 671. So 671 in the Action Bible. And again, I'll be reading out of the Story Bible. In the Story Bible, it's page 431. All right, our Bible story today is Philip and the Ethiopian. Now, Ethiopia is a country in Africa, and this man was uh, an important man. He was the treasurer. He handled all the money for the queen of Ethiopia. So he was important uh, and a very learned man, but we also find out today that he had a lot of questions and he didn't know everything either. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south. Take the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And Philip rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a court official of Candace the queen. He was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now he was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him. He heard him reading from Isaiah the prophet, and he asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to death, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. And the Ethiopian said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself? About someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along, they came to some water. The Ethiopian said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. Philip and the Ethiopian both went down into the water. Philip baptized him, and when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. 
The Ethiopian saw Philip no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. He preached the gospel to all the towns by the sea. So in this story, this man from Ethiopia is reading from the book of Isaiah, which uh, is one of the prophets. And there is a lot in Isaiah that is uh, very difficult to understand. But in this scripture, I bet if you heard this, you would know, like a sheep he was led to death and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. That's talking about Jesus, how when he was um, brought before the Sanhedrin and put on trial, he said nothing and he was uh, condemned to death on the cross. So he died for us. So that uh, passage in Isaiah is referring to Jesus, but the Ethiopian didn't know that. So Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, was able to explain it to him and share the good news of Jesus. And now this man is going to go on his way rejoicing and telling others the good news about Jesus as well. So the Ethiopian was a wise man, but it was only through the Holy Spirit that he could understand the scriptures and be called to faith. And that's what happens to us too. We don't come to Jesus on our own. The Holy Spirit calls us and does that through the sacraments, through baptism, through his word, and through Holy Communion. We have a Bible verse today that says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. That's Romans 10, 17. Would you say that with me, please? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17. All right, that's our Bible verse. Your activity sheet today looks like this. You're gonna be able to color these in and then cut apart your papers. So the first one is an ear, right? We hear with our ears. We listen, we hear God's word from the Bible with our ears. We hear God's word preached when we go to church. Um, teachers teach us about his word in Sunday school or at our regular if we go to Concordia. And people in your family may read God's word to you. And then another one of these pictures is an eye. What do you do with your eyes? Well, we look and see with our eyes. You can use your eyes to see the cross and remember that Jesus died for your sins. And you can use your eyes to read the Bible and storybooks, Bible storybooks yourself. And then we also have the heart. So the Holy Spirit works through God's word and baptism to put faith in our hearts so that we can believe in Jesus. And then the final one is the cross. Jesus died on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven. Because we believe in Jesus, then someday we will live with him in heaven. So this is your paper for the week. Like I said, you can cut it apart and you can talk with your family about each of these things and how they remind you of how God loves us and how his grace extends to us, how he gives us his word and, and keeps his promises and loves us so very much and sent Jesus. So that is your paper for the week. And before we end, let's go ahead and close with a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of faith in our hearts so that we can trust in you and believe in you as our Lord and Savior. Help us go rejoicing, sharing your good news with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and I have a question for you, a little bit, not exactly a trivia question, but um, every week I have been moving around when I do our Sunday school lesson for the week. Next week, our story is the story of the conversion of Saul or Paul. And I would love it if you would send me a text or email with where you think that I will be for the Bible story next week. So the story is the conversion of Paul. If you think you know where I will be when I do that story, send me a text or email and let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week in the Lord and we'll see you next week. Thanks.